Welcome to Chasing Tents, everyone. My name is Abby. Thank you very much for joining me. Excuse the lockdown here. It's lockdown in the UK and all the barbers are closed. Now, I welcome you to this two-part series, which is all going to be about motorbike ergonomics. Episode one today is all about adjustable aftermarket rear sets. Episode two will be about aftermarket wider clip-ons, how this whole motorbike ergonomics setup can really help you on the road and track. Now, being a small channel, I always tell you where I get the information from to make such kind of videos. Now, I have watched a lot of content and read a lot of stuff from Dave Moss, who is a, an absolute specialist when it comes to motorbike ergonomics, performance on the track, tires, suspension, all sorts. He doesn't need any introduction. Now, rear sets and clip-ons form such an integral part of your performance on track and better rideability on the road, but they always get ignored by a lot of people. Now, if you get this sorted at the outset, you can really feel like one with the tarmac and also one with your machine. So let's talk about some aftermarket fully adjustable rear sets and why I think everyone should be investing in them. And the word to be noted in this sentence, which I've just said, was investing. But just before I show you the benefits, we really need to work with our mindset here and try to grasp the true essence of how something simple like an adjustable lightweight rear set can truly help you. Now, please bear with me here and don't skip this part because some products really need to be understood before you shrug them off or just buy them for a blink factor. So without boring you too much, let's talk about some very intriguing mindset points here. Now, when you buy a new car, what's one of the first things you adjust on that car? The seat, maybe lumbar support, uh, you adjust the mirrors, you adjust the steering position, you adjust all sorts of things before you start moving. When you buy a motorbike, how often do you straight away start adjusting your rear sets and clip on? Probably not that often. So that's why we need to really have an open mindset approach about this video. Then only we can really look into the benefits of, of rear set and how they can actually properly benefit us on track and also on the road. See, the thing is, a lot of us start to adjust our own self and mold our own body to the factory set ergonomics of the bike, which is clearly one setting fits for all. However, what we need to be doing is molding the bike to your comfort or needs or your individual riding style. Okay, so let's cut to the chase and let me show you the rear sets. Number one I really want to show you is the actual factory rear sets which you get with your bike. I mean, these are from the Aprilia RSV4 RF. I own the Aprilia RSV4 RF. Now, I took them off about two years ago, just before I did a uh, a three-day Euro uh, track event at Almera uh, in, in Spain. Now, when I had these on, I just thought nothing of it. I thought, okay, I've got rear sets, fine. I took these off and put aftermarket ones. And, you know, on the racetrack, I was like, wow. You know, in terms of positioning, grip, how much pressure I could put and stuff, we'll go through that all in a bit. But what I really want to show you is there's not much to OEM rear set. There's about... If you break them up, you'll probably get three parts out of it. If this was the aftermarket ones, you'll get many parts. And I'll show you them in a bit. So what I really wanted to show you with these is, uh, if you're following my channel, I weigh everything. So I've made videos before where I've weighed everything on the bike, mainly kind of the, the unsprung bit. So I know these are not moving parts, but still, these are 1100 and about 1150 grams or 1140 grams. Uh, which is just over a kilo and and the aftermarket rear sets are half a kilo lighter so if you are a stickler for weight um i am but only with unsprung mass with carbon wheels and stuff like that uh, 520 chain sprocket conversions however if you really like to get lighter and stuff like that on the bike all the parts and stuff first of all get yourself lighter but if you are a stickler for weight uh, the aftermarket uh, extreme components ones are half a kilo lighter just if you want to uh, know about it. So this is the box. I'm not going to do a detailed unboxing. I'll just show you what's in the box. But then what I'll do is later on in the video, I'll show you these rear sets on the bike, compare them to the factory ones and show you how different parts which are adjustable can really help you on the track. So let's have a quick look at the box. Extreme components, who are they? They don't really shout out too much about themselves because what they do is they keep themselves very busy in MotoGP. They're with the, the KTM team. A lot of the teams, so most of the MotoGP teams use their work tops made of carbon fiber. They are absolute specialists with fairings, so carbon fiber fair, fairings, uh, and they make different parts uh, of the bike, which uh, a lot of the MotoGP teams use, which are uh, your lever guards, uh, you know, your uh, 
levers and all sorts of things check them out on the website um, so let me just show you these so the box pretty nice clean box not too much going on their social media is on it uh, road race performance stickers on it because that's whom uh, I've got them from and uh, if you follow my channel you know I have a permanent 10% code in the description for uh, for road race performance anything on their website 10% anyways uh, let's not do too much plug-in let's talk about the business which is in the box I've actually opened this box before so there's no seller tip and stuff so you get this one part second and third and every between every layer you've got these form things uh, and you get the extreme component sticker and you get the sticker from uh, road race performance because they they are the exclusive uh, sellers for them in the UK so that's all I really wanted to show you I don't want to uh, cut out every single part and show you because the best thing for me to do is actually put these on the motorbike and then show you that way and also go through all the benefits uh, while they're on the bike and also what I'm going to do now is uh, cut to some of the scientific benefits and how they like kind of what they're made of and how they really help you on the track so next part of the video video is going to be about the benefits of having aftermarket race sets uh, different kind of benefits and you'd be surprised how much of um, thinking goes behind making of race sets and why they make certain parts and what are the the simple benefits dynamically Welcome to the garage everyone, normally I vlog from that room but I thought I'll take you in the garage and I'll really show you the extreme components rear sets, how they uh, are kind of are different from the OEM rear sets and how they really dynamically benefit you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the OEM rear sets and the extreme components rear sets and also then show you the little bits and bobs and how the foot positioning and everything, how everything comes together to give you a better riding experience whether it's track or on the road so let's have a look at the at the rear sets and compare them to the OEM rear sets and I'll go through everything with you point by point now first things first I want to show you is the sheet now this is the sheet which you get with the extreme components uh, rear set so this is only the right hand side the brake side so I just want you to concentrate on one part first just this part which is that okay so if you're on a racetrack, racing or track day, you have a fall, this will be the first thing which will get damaged. So if you have a spare one of these with you, you don't have to replace anything else. You just replace that. So that is one of the first benefits of having aftermarket race sets. And if you compare that to the OEM, and, and one thing I must tell you, this is absolutely solid. When you have a crash, okay, this is made of solid billet aluminium. When you have a crash, this doesn't fold up. So you, if you can see here, if you can see this mark, this was a crash from having these and these fold up in a crash, okay? So your exhaust pipe, the link pipe gets damaged. This one saves it big time when you have a crash. So these are solid and these are kind of really helpful when you have a crash. So first thing first. Now let's look at it this part here so first thing this is completely non-adjustable you can adjust this one two three four so back front up and down four different positions you can adjust these on these ones completely non-adjustable then you got these hero blobby things which a lot of people shave off because it can puzzle you on a track if this hits the ground while you're cornering now let's look at the grip factor when I touch these, these are, you know what, the only word I can use at the moment, razor sharp, absolutely grippy end, and all this is so grippy compared to very kind of okay-ish, you know, when it comes to, I mean, I like this end part, so you can see Aprilia has got a bit of a, a racing pedigree, so the end part is grippy, but still, it's very, very smooth, so you get an optimum grip by having a really nice end part so the end of your boot so let's get the boot in the in the picture so you're cornering you you push it from this side this is there a lot of people actually have a hole here um, I mean you can see this is worn off but a lot of racers have a hole here because they put so much pressure uh, with this and turn their bike so let's move back to what we were talking about so this is non-adjustable okay this is 
for a shorty exhaust hanger or an, a, a, an exhaust hanger. This plate is obviously missing. I think I've, I've, I've left it somewhere in the garage. Uh, everywhere else you see, it's a very simplistic design, so not too complicated. However, again, I mean, OEM rear sets, they don't really care what size shoe you've got. And if you go to the aftermarket one, you can adjust this front and back. So if you've got a shorter foot, move it back. If you've got a longer, move it front. So you've got adjustability here, you've got adjustability here. And that's kind of all the adjustability you need for the brake side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the other side, which is the gear side. And I'll go through everything with you on that side. Again, we move on to this side. There's no adjustability on your OEM rear set here. Here, you can move it back and forth depending on your, on, your, on your shoe size. Here, again, you've got one, two, three adjustabilities. Here, you've got one, two, three, four, five. So you can move it up, down, back or front depending on your positioning, foot size, your height, all sorts. This is pretty big, so it protects your heel from going inwards. If your heel are inwards, so let's, let me do it this way. If your heel are going to be too much inwards, your knees are going to be outwards. You can't stay your bike with your legs properly. So this has to stay this way. Uh, and obviously when you're turning and stuff, it, it can go all sorts. So it's very important for you to have a decent size, uh, this portion, which protects your foot from going inwards too much. Okay, I really want you to see how sim simple this design is. Not too many holes, uh, not too much going on. So even a novice person can put them on and think, you know what, there's only two holes here, let's try this, let's try that. So you can try a different positioning there. Here, you also see, you this at the moment is on road shift, so if someone prefers race shift, you can have that as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break everything uh, into different parts and show you how rear sets can really help you on the road and track. Okay, welcome to my favorite part of the video where I decipher all the benefits and explain them to you one by one. You know me, I'm not that kind of a guy who just unboxes something and says, look what amazing part I've got and I've just put it on my bike. I like to unbox something and then go through everything in detail. So now, once I've showed you the OEM rear sets, how they compare to the aftermarket extreme components rear sets, it's time to decipher every single thing one by one. Part number one I want to mention is adjustability. So let's talk about adjustability. So now we're talking about adjustability. So let's talk about the foot peg first and then I'm going to talk about something else. Now with the foot peg, I showed you there were some forward settings, rear, up and down. And I had at the, at the top more setting. Now why would you want to have different settings on your foot peg? When you're on the racetrack, a lot of times, or on the road as well, a lot of times you see some riders hanging their foot that's just a bad habit foot hanging there and when they turn a lot of these times this part touches the ground that's just a bad habit however if you're not doing that if you're not that person who's who's got that bad habit all the time and you're still touching the ground that means you need aftermarket rear sets because the setting on your oem rear set is too low for you okay that's the first indication second indication is look at this part of your shoe if it's always touching the ground every time you're out on the road or on the track, you still then need some adjustability on your rear set, especially on the foot peg. Now with the OEM, you don't have that. Hence, you'll need to move to the aftermarket rear set. Okay, let me give you very two quick examples before I move on to the adjustability of the, of the gear shift lever and the brake lever. Now I've got a friend uh, who's amazing at Donington GP circuit, or well, any circuit. He does a one minute 36 at Don Donington GP circuit, Dean Birkinshaw. Now I, I, I was with him last year. He was on his uh, road going to Ono with OEM rear sets. He completely destroyed his shoe and he was just thinking, I wish I changed my rear sets. Now, when you are quick on a track, you really would feel the need to have the aftermarket rear sets because you would absolutely destroy your shoe. This moves me on to a second example from a 44 teeth video when they were um, reviewing the Ducati V4 1100cc compared to the Aprilia RS V4 RF 1000cc. Aprilia was quicker. Uh, but what I want to tell you is as soon as they put the slicks on the Aprilia, the ergonomics change, okay? And 
he completely destroyed his RST, brand new RST shoe. I think they're sponsored by RST, the, the 44 deep guys. So, um, so that he, he just said, I wish I had aftermarket race sets at Hareth Circuit. Now, this shows another example when you sometimes the profile of the tire can also change the ergonomics of the bike, and then you then really feel the need of aftermarket race sets. Okay, from these two examples, let's move on to the adjustability of the lever. Most importantly, the brake lever here and the gear change we're going to talk about the gear change more because i think that's more important with the auto blippers and the quick shifters you really got to have a, a quick a, a kind of a a sudden a um a, a, what's the best word kind of a a definitive change because if you're doing, going to do a half-hearted uh, move on these auto blippers and quick shifters you can end up in the gravel with having a false neutral so the reason i was i was mentioning earlier is there's a patch on your shoe i've seen a lot of times some people are changing the gears with the, this part this part there is a position of your foot which is kind of perfect for a gear chain i, I call it foot talk perfect amount of torque which your foot generates to have a crisp gear change so always make sure your because you can move it backwards and forwards on these extreme components aftermarket race sets, you have this position perfectly placed for a, for say here, in the middle on this patch, so you have a good crisp gear change. Now this can differ for someone who's had a foot injury. Now some people can't be as quick. If they've had a foot injury, they might have to move it forward or backward depending on how kind of sometimes I was speaking to a, uh, a physio not too long ago because I had a foot issue after my injury and he was saying so after injury sometimes when you move your foot quickly sometimes it's it's like a biting point of a clutch it's sometimes uh, later on you get the most power or sometimes initially you get the more power so you can adjust all that here if you want uh, you know kind of no slack whatsoever or you need a little bit of slack so you can change it so I know I'm going into a lot of detail but it all helps. So this was adjustability. Now let's move on to the next topic. Okay, next important benefit is maneuverability on the bike. Change of direction on the bike and how rear sets really dynamically help you in changing the directions of the bike. Now you might think, how, how is that possible? Because I tend to change it with my, with my hands. Now 80% or 70% of the bike's change of direction should really happen, especially on fast corners and stuff, with your legs. Now one thing which is very important where your legs are connected to at the bottom is the rear set. The grip, actual grip on the rear set, the positioning of the rear set and the end part of the rear set. Now another thing I must mention to you which I learned at the Haret circuit which I think I gained an extra two, two three seconds once uh, one of the I think it was a Simon Crafer uh, group guy who told me about this. Now changing direction of the bike not only depends on the pressure you put on the foot pegs but also using the other leg the inner thigh of the other leg to move it in now this is a very good time to explain to you why you have this cut here and this place here where the stomp grips are placed is what important role this section plays with your inner thigh turn four at Haret circuit a very fast say let's say a very fast left-hander okay you're putting pressure with your left foot on the foot peg to turn it fine you also use your right inner thigh to push this part okay so the bike moves in that direction try that next time it helps and how is that how does that relate to race sets because if you've got good good confidence on your race sets not only you will have better positioning here to push it this side and you also can then on the other side put pressure this way so the bike turns beautifully also then just like Simon Crafer says, coming out of corners using the same energy with your foot pegs, pressure down, straighten your bike earlier so you can get on the power quicker. Remember, majority of the time on the race tracks is made with mini straights and the longer straights. How quickly you can get on to full throttle coming out of corner, not while you're leaning, but how quickly you can straighten the bike. Sometimes you straighten the bike and you still a bit this side and then you give it power and only if you've got good confidence with your rear sets is that when you can do that so not only rear sets help you uh, kind of with confidence uh, approaching a turn during a turn and coming out of the turn as well so it all pays dividends 
Last point I want to mention is fatigue and better ergonomics. Both work hand in hand. Now, a lot of times when people don't have confidence with their rear sets and leg positioning, foot positioning, changing directions with your legs, is these are the people who use their hands and arms and shoulders to put pressure on their clip-ons, okay? They put pressure on the clip-ons to change the direction of the bike. This is very dangerous. Number one, you get a lot of low sides with this one. Number two, you get a lot of arm pump, fatigue, tricep soreness. I used to get this a lot. Honestly, when, I'm not kidding, my first three Silverson track days with the OEM rear sets, I used to come home and for the next two, three days, I had extreme soreness on this part because I was being an absolute idiot and changing direction and using my arms to put pressure on these. You know, you can put certain pressure on them, it's absolutely fine, but don't rely on your handlebars, on your clip-ons, on the road or on the track completely to change directions because this will lead to a crash because always remember, the rear tire is always bigger than the front one. So if you put pressure on your foot pegs and use your legs to change directions, that's much, much better than putting a lot of pressure using your handlebars or clip-ons. That's just gonna, you're just gonna end up in the crash. Uh, in a crash and now next we move on to ergonomics ergonomics if you've got better once you put your rear sets on and you adjust them to your comfort that ergonomics is just going to pay you dividends in the long run because the fatigue will be less i said i think earlier in the video that when you're at the racetrack by three o'clock or three thirty, a lot of people are out of gas one of my quickest lap times at any circuit, Portimao, Hareth, Silverstone, Donington have come at the last session of the day. Why? Because my bike is really well set up, you know, and I really concentrate well on my fitness, number one, and number two, the ergonomics of the bike, because if you are fit at the end of the day, you can give that 100% performance, which you gave in your second session. First session is always a bit of lazy. Second session, and then your last session. And last session is where a lot of people have gone home or tired, or they're worried about traffic uh, and all sorts. And that's why I always say ergonomics help you with kind of better performance on the track because you have a lot of energy left you're not as sore you're not as depleted you still got the confidence in your bike and in yourself and the ability to go quicker in the last session a fed up rider from his bike is never going to be a quick rider and a fed up rider is also going to make mistakes he's always going to have crashes you know you've got to be comfortable on your bike to then concentrate on other important things to get faster or ride longer if you're going to do a lot of miles on the bike so it's really important for you to have a good setup i mean i had diamond rear sets i had uh, giamoto before as well they got they got badly damaged in a crash unfortunately but i finally moved on to extreme components and i found them really really kind of diverse the, the settings are loads they're motor gp technology you know and if you go on their website KTM uses them, they supply it to a lot of different teams. It's a fantastic company and I would really, you know, I, I don't throw a lot of plugins there, but this time I must, must say I'm really pleased with them. And if you want to buy them, go to Road Race Performance and the, all the details are in the description. There's a discount code on there as well, you can get up to 10 to 15.